before this video starts, I just want to say that I do have hay fever, and at this time of the year, it's, it's not great, I, I can't lie. Um, so please bear with me if I sound emotionless or my voice is croaky. Hello guys, I'm back for another video, and it's going to be a discussion one like the Valorant one I uploaded a few weeks ago, uh, but this time we're going to discuss what I consider to be Mojang's biggest failure. Mojang is known for its long-lasting game, Minecraft, which has now sold more than 42 million copies across all of its platforms, placing it in the top three most successful video games of all time. Many people, including myself, fell in love with this game from a young age, whether it was due to the basic indie sandbox aspect, the PvP aspect offered, or friend recommendations. Although, the production studio isn't without faults along the way. There have been plenty of mishaps and mistakes, mainly game bugs like duplication, making it easier for hacked clients than most other games, but the biggest of which was arguably Minecraft Earth, which I will talk about in this video. Released back in 2019, it was based around AR, commonly known as Augmented Reality, and going outside featuring many items, resources, and more of which we know from the nostalgic Minecraft world that we've grown up playing. Officially, the app closed down in June 2021, with the final update abandoning all pretenses of hope. Its failure can be attributed to many factors, not just the pandemic as implied by Minecraft Earth's closing announcement. With that being said, let's get into the video and discuss the factors which I believe contributed to Minecraft Earth's failure. As previously mentioned, the game was designed to be a free movement and collaborative play with a similar concept to the much more successful Pokemon Go. Both of these objectives became near impossible since COVID-19 occurred. Although the initial release saw 1.4 million downloads in the first week, 1.2 million of which were from the USA, which when they enforced a lockdown, the popularity fell drastically. As a result, the game was installed initially, but deleted by most since you simply couldn't go outside at the time, essentially making it impossible to play. To try and combat this, the producers tried to make the game playable indoors by the time of release but it was all too late. At the time, Minecraft also saw a resurgence in popularity between 2019 and 2020. This was mainly caused by an increase in Minecraft content on social media, such as the Dream SMP, meaning survival multiplayer, which became much more popular in server lists. Subsequently, Minecraft reallocated its resources to other areas that bring value to the community, such as Minecraft Dungeons and Java slash Bedrock updates to keep the game fun for all, no matter experience level. Key updates included 1.14 Village and Pillage update from April 2019 and the game-changing 1.16 Never update of June 2020, adding a fresh feel to the game for the community to enjoy. Even though the pandemic is being taken less seriously in most parts of the world due to vaccination, I still believe Minecraft Earth would have failed due to a combination of other factors also. But this poor timing definitely put the game on the back burner from the very beginning and made it harder to capture the public's attention since the game's key function relied on movement. Microtransactions offer in-game cosmetics or game-enhancing items and are widely unpopular to most people due to previous perceptions such as Electronic Arts game series FIFA. In the case of Minecraft Earth, only cosmetics were offered which is a lot better than the pay-to-win environment, however Mojang's decision to sell to Microsoft made these in-game purchases skyrocket in price. As is the trend with most games, sales reduced, especially since the majority of the fanbase is still young and can't afford to spend nor is there any advantage to donating. Some began to believe that the game was a pump and dump scheme intended to gather purchases for a little satisfaction to the player in return. Once people realised this and the general opinion loomed, people began to uninstall and go to more popular and established AR games, such as the Nintendo release previously mentioned. During the course of being available, I didn't personally see any advertisement for Minecraft Earth, which is imperative to getting more downloads. Even a short advert on YouTube could have pushed their download rates up by thousands, but rather they chose to rely on the community which Mojang had created for vastly different sandbox games. If I'm not wrong, I believe they targeted the American population as the majority of downloads in the opening week occurred from the USA, so lack diversity for a global release. For small indie games, I believe regional releases are the best option to gather feedback and be notified of glitches in the beta stage. However, as it has a big organisation behind the app, a global release wouldn't have been beyond them and patches could be released quickly, which is important to maintaining user retention. Personally, I believe this game is relying on public influencers to play the game and leave positive feedback, whether that be YouTubers, streamers or journalists to gain public attention. 
However, this never really happened, and since the real life game genre had begun to slow down in popularity, the game really didn't take off. Let me know down below if you received an advertisement for Minecraft Earth, and if you're enjoying this type of video, please subscribe, it would mean the world to us. Anyway, back to it. Mojang was undertaken by Microsoft when they were bought out in 2014 for $2.5 billion, leading to public hopes falling for Minecraft Earth. Some in the community had residual resentment relating to their ownership change, and had no trust in Microsoft to launch a successful spin-off game, and to be fair to them, they were right. Over the years, Microsoft has produced tons of mobile games, the most successful being Solitaire, established from the classic Windows game, a Minecraft Pocket Edition, even though this came out before Microsoft was involved. In 2021, Microsoft also gained Fallout Shelter and Elder Scrolls Blades as part of the ZeniMax media acquisition. The common trend in all of these? They were all pre-built games. So what about Microsoft's independent attempts? Well, simply put, they all failed. We've had Gears Pop, Age of Empires, Forza Street, and a handful of other games like Halo Spartan Strike, but all of these share a common problem. They just aren't, well, fun to play for the most part. Don't get me wrong, I love the updates Microsoft is doing for Minecraft currently, but the mobile field looks to be one they should avoid as it's much more tricky to master. For example, Fallout Shelter wasn't exactly an original concept, but it was fun with piles of content to access for free. In contrast, Microsoft's independent attempts seem to be more focused on slapping a brand name on an adaptation of a pre-existing game to win downloads in the market, which simply doesn't work for mobile games. As with most mobile games, the user is looking for a quick play game during short breaks or, you know, uh, the toilet, rather than longer gaming sessions. In the case of Minecraft Earth, the lack of advertising and limited interest in what the public deemed to be a copy of Pokemon Go led to less installations. Since the game was in beta, there was lots of bugs and glitches, mainly since AR slash 4D technology is relatively new and very experimental. On top of this, there was limited tutorial help and many reported being confused how to play, even going so far to leave reviews on the app. This lack of infrastructure led to less recommendations to friends, a key part of gathering a community which is vital for expanding this game and maintaining gaming satisfaction for all. Another key flaw was the fact that the producers built this game for newer firms. As the game relied heavily on augmented reality, it wasn't optimised for all devices. This real-world technology required better hardware to avoid crashing, freezing, or simply to play at all, especially when it comes to the building aspect of the game. Ultimately, this prevented those with weaker or older phones from playing, again cutting a large chunk of potential mobile downloads. This could have been fixed with some easy optimization or alternative options like Pokemon Go possesses, however they were never added to the game before closure. Since Microsoft has reallocated its efforts, we've seen some big improvements to Minecraft. They have begun to engage the community as much as they can with numerous controversial mob votes such as the 2021 Allay, Copper Golem and Glare. Although this isn't an original concept, with the first mob vote being in 2017, this way the community gets to have a say in how the game is developed as well as new functions that could be interesting to play around with. For example, the Allay and Auto Farms. Essentially, this helps to bring the gamer's wildest ideas to life, making Minecraft refreshing to play. The 1.17 Caves and Cliffs update was also released in the peak of Minecraft Resurgence, which helped to maintain a user base and add new biomes and terrain for even the most veteran of players to explore. Minecraft is commended for its long service and a game which doesn't go without updates. Although they may take a while, they help to bring a new set of players each time, while also preventing the older players from getting bored, a key aspect which Minecraft Earth was missing. More recently, the newest Minecraft game set to release in 2023, Minecraft Legends, has raised a lot of hype. I know we've released a video on this already, so if you'd like to watch it, then it's on the channel for you to view. Personally, although not much is known, I believe this will be quite similar to Minecraft Dungeons, but should provide something new for the community to enjoy for a while, away from the standalone sandbox game which can be oversaturated at times. Hopefully, Legends won't flop like Minecraft Earth did. Well that's it from me this week, I know it's a bit of a short one, but if you enjoyed please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and we will upload a video next week. See you then.